happen. We need a move of God. And the psalmist is saying to us, as we come together, as we pour out our hearts to God, as we worship God in spirit and truth, as we ascribe to him the glory, the honor, and the majesty that belongs to him, that if God chooses to rend heaven and God come down to show how great he is and how powerful he is in the salvation of souls, in the reclamation of backsliders, in the move of reaching a generation of young people, many who've almost given up on God, that's the type of God that we serve and that's the type of God that we ought to worship. And we're to worship him with energy and with zeal and with passion, expecting great things from him. Well, let me wrap up and close this thing up. We're to worship him because he's a great God, because he's a great king, because he's a creator. And then finally, in verse 6, he says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture. And so, in this third point, it is an invitation to actually worship God. When we praise God with shout and with great joy, that's one thing. But when we worship God, that is more of a meditation, it is contemplative thought as we entertain these, these great ideas about him and as we respond to that our souls are humbled, our spirits are bowed before him and we bow before God in awe and in adoration. So he says, let us kneel before our maker for he is our God. And now he personalizes it. He says, he's your God. He should be treasured by us. We should value God because he is our God. He has made himself our God. He's not just some distant deity. He's not just some cosmic force. He is a personal God. And in the person of Jesus Christ, he incarnated himself so that he could be seen and understood and related to. And so now we have a personal relationship with God. And so we are to value the worship of God because he's our God, he's our personal possession. He belongs to us. And then he says, and we are his people. We are his people. For he was our God, and we are the sheep of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. And he says, so because we belong to him, and he values us, and we ought to value him. And in return, we yield ourselves to him, and we avail ourselves to him, and we believe that he can and that he will do great things in and through us. Amen? Well, just close in one last little nuance. In case we don't respond to the invitation to praise because of who God is, and the invitation to worship him. The psalmist gives us an object lesson of people who had every reason to praise God. The children of Israel in the wilderness. And they had experienced the miraculous hand of God. And God had come down to Egypt and he had delivered them from Egyptian bondage. God had poured out the plagues upon Pharaoh. God had caused the deaf angel to pass over and the firstborn child in every Egyptian household died and the Jewish children who were under the blood, they lived. And God had led them out of the wilderness and he had brought them through the Red Sea and led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night and God had opened up a rock and gave them water. He had rain, bread, then out of heaven and fed them. They had experienced the miraculous hand of God. Yet they doubted him. And they questioned him. And they balked when he told them to go in and take the promised land. And so the psalmist says, don't forget this sad, sad story. 
of those people who could have been the chartered people into the promised land, and their names would have been written down in the corridors of history, and we would have celebrated their bravery and their courage and their determination and resolve to serve God. But in the time that God gave him them, they missed it. I think one of the things that should always concern us individually, as families, and as a church, that we don't miss the time that God has for us. That we don't miss the time that God has for us to serve him. That we don't miss the opportunity to be used by God to do something great. And sometimes the opportunity to serve God is disguised as a difficult, hard, tough situation. When they looked over into the promised land and they saw the, the giants in the promised land, it seemed to be an insurmountable situation for them to deal with, so it was easy for them to shirk away from it and say, there's no way that we can do this. But sometimes the opportunity to serve God, it is disguised as what appears to be an impossible situation. But if we walk by faith and if we trust God, that God can and God will show up and show himself to be a great God. Amen? Amen? but it often starts with our worship of God. That's where we get an idea of what God is like, and that's where we encounter God. And so the God that we encounter in worship, the God that impresses himself upon our souls and our spirits and our minds in worship, the God that mesmerizes us and fills us with joy unspeakable and full of glory, the God that stirs us and excites us in worship, then that's the same God that will meet us in the thoroughfare of our service for him. But very often because we have not been stirred in worship, we've not been mesmerized in worship, we've not been captured by God in worship, then we lack the confidence to believe that the God that we have worshipped is a God that can show up when we need him in a tough situation. But I believe that God still will show himself to us to be great and to be grand, and he will impress himself upon us, and he will shake us at the core of our beings that we might know that he is God all by himself, and that he is able to empower us to do that which he called us to do. Amen? Let's bow for prayer, shall we? If you're here this morning and you're trapped and held hostage in trespasses and sin, guilt and shame, or whatever it might be, I just thought about to tell you today that God is a great God to save. He's a great God to save. He's a great God to deliver. And he will meet you right where you are. And he will bring forgiveness. He will bring salvation. He will bring hope. He will bring healing for your tired, weary soul. And right where you are this moment, if you will acknowledge your sin, if you sin, you fall short of God's glory. And if you understand that the wages of sin